How to defeat New Pond Syndrome. We offer five possible solutions to defeat the problem. How to defeat New Pond Syndrome. First, we need to understand the syndrome. Then we need to provide the right conditions for the bacteria to thrive. Only then can we look at five solutions on how to defeat it. These solutions on how to defeat it also apply to the spring starting up your pond after the winter. What is new pond syndrome? The key element here is new or not mature pond filter. Think of your pond filter as your life support system for your koi. It has a mass of two different living bacteria in two distinct stages. Luckily, they live on the same filter material. As soon as you put koi into the pond, you have ammonia as they breathe it out through their gills and poo. The bigger the koi, the more ammonia they produce. The amount of ammonia is closely linked to the water temperature. As the koi's metabolic rate goes up, the water warms, so does the amount of ammonia they produce. At 24C, they are very active and produce more ammonia, but the bacteria multiplies at a quicker rate, so the pond matures quicker. The koi produce a lot of ammonia whether they are feeding or not. It's a common mistake to cut back on the feeding until the readings fall. You need to feed small, sensible amounts of food at a constant rate three times a day. This, in my humble opinion, helps the bacteria to grow by providing them with a steady flow of food. If you have a lot of koi in your pond at 24C, the readings will be high even if you're not feeding them. So cutting back off on the food makes little sense to me unless you're overfeeding or don't have enough filter media. I will come back to this later. All five solutions I offer work without reducing the feeding, as it's not the feeding that is the issue, but managing the high ammonia and nitrite readings. Stage one is the ammonia into nitrite. Stage two is nitrite into nitrate. As living bacteria, it needs time to grow on the media in the biofilm in sufficient numbers to treat all the ammonia and nitrite in the pond water. But it's not just the filter, it's on the pond walls, it's in the pipe, it's everywhere in the pond. But it needs time to grow and mature to the amount of koi in the pond and the amount of food you are feeding. The time it takes depends on the water temperature. At 24C, as low to four to six weeks. But in winter, it can take four to six months or even longer. The charts in the description have been reproduced with the kind permission of Sid Mitchell. See mankeysankey.co.uk. His website is well worth bookmarking as it is an excellent resource for all koi keepers. Looking at the charts, you can see these are well worth printing and laminating to waterproof them. Ammonia is more toxic the higher the pH and the higher the water temperature. Please note that the role of pH is the opposite in ammonia and nitrite. Nitrite is more toxic the lower the pH and the higher the water temperature. So you can see how a rise in pH and a rise in temperature can have a huge effect on the toxic effect of ammonia. Please note, these are the maximum values. 
As the filter runs, the bacteria uses the hardness of the water as part of the conversion process in the nitrogen cycle, so the water becomes more acidic. If the pond was left alone with no water changes, the water would get so acidic it would cause a pH crash and your koi will die as they're basically swimming in acidic water. So water changes are essential to maintain the water hardness. You can, of course, buffer with oyster shells or lith aqua, which is a calcified seaweed, high in trace elements and carbonates. It is the ideal filter media due to its porous construction, perfect for raising the KH of soft water as well as stabling the pH. I use it in the bottom of all my showers. It's worth putting some into a new pond to buffer the system and give the bacteria a boost. Now, if you have a pH crash, you will have to reboot or restart your filter system as all the bacteria will have died. Clays are also useful by providing essential min minerals used to help the bacteria grow. You will never get rid of ammonia or nitrite if you have insufficient filter media in your pond. So check you have enough media. 25 litres of Helix 13 will treat 170 grams of food a day. So use the guide in the description, list the koi and their length, and then work out their weight from the guide. Times it by 3% and that should give you the amount you should be feeding at 24C. Before you start the pond, dip the plastic filter media in a strong solution of potassium permanganate for a day and rinse off. This will etch the plastic, allowing the bacteria to form a biofilm quicker. But some filter media is pond ready. So check before using PP. If you are starting a pond, keep the stocking level low, three to four koi. Feeding your koi if you're starting a pond, just a small measured amount regularly, depending on the water temperature. Less is more is a good move with a new pond. It is far better to keep feeding a constant amount a day rather than a feast and famine situation where you stop feeding as the ammonia goes higher. The bacteria can only grow if there's a steady stream of food. The feast and famine will just slow the whole process down. By giving bacteria an overload of food one day and starving the bacteria the next day will not help the media mature quicker. It will just take longer to establish. There is a time delay in both stages. The second stage, nitrite to nitrate, seems slower or more stubborn. So use a filter gel and night out to kickstart the filter media. As you can see from the diagram, the whole process of the nitrogen cycle uses up five oxygen atoms. So you can see it's essential to the health of the bacteria to have air or oxygen in the water going into the filter. Don't expect your bacteria to grow if you starve it of oxygen. Likewise, after the filter, the water coming into the pond will lack oxygen as the filter will have used it all up. So add some air to your pond. There are five ways I know to combat high ammonia and nitrite readings. You can use them all at once or you can use them one at a time. You can remove the ammonia and nitrite by using a prime water conditioner to make the water safe for your koi, but keep the feeding constant so the bacteria has a constant supply of food to feed on. You can increase the bacteria of the ammonia and nitrite 
by using gels, balls, etc. I keep a stock of micro lift night out two and Colombo Bacto balls for this purpose. You can dilute the ammonia and nitrite. You can increase the trickle in or water changes through a three pod purifier to dilute the nitrite. Personally, a trickle in keeps the pond more stable and it's better than a huge water change, which the koi notice and relax to. You can relieve the ammonia and nitrite symptoms by adding salt at half an ounce per gallon. Please use a salt meter. If you have a shower, you can increase the turnover or flow over it so more ammonia is gassed off. As the water hits the media, some of the ammonia is gassed off. This also reduces the amount of nitrite and nitrate in the pond. Personally, I think a high turnover on a shower helps the bacteria colonize the shower quicker, as it spreads the bacteria quicker by the faster flow. There is a lot of air in the water as it splashes down and the media is covered with a thin film of water. So the other side of the water is open to the air. So there is a lot of air water contact or exchange. As the turnover is higher, the bacteria get to feed off the ammonia and nitrite in the water. It's more efficient. If the bacteria misses some of the ammonia or nitrite in the water, it comes around again quicker. So the bacteria get a second bite of the cherry. But the shower does need the air to circulate freely around it for it to work effectively. On showers, I like a tray on the bottom tier to trap all the debris washed off from the media to stop it going straight into the pond. Some of the ceramic dust can be very sharp and it can cut a koi's mouth, which then leaves them open to a bacteria infection. I rinse out the trap once a year. None of these ways of combating high ammonia and nitrite involve reducing or stopping the feeding of the koi. The golden rule is less is more regarding feeding koi in this startup period. But the level of feeding must be sufficient to create ammonia. If you only have five tosai in a 20,000 litre pond, it's barely going to register ammonia readings. But, but if you have the same five tosai in a 2,000 litre pond, it, the readings will be high. Less is more, so start feeding small amounts, keep the level of the feeding constant until both the ammonia and the nitrite start to drop, and then only a tiny increase in food. Note the increase in food and the readings, and you will be able to predict the readings after the next increase. Three tiny feeds spread over the day help the bacteria to grow faster rather than one small feed a day. Please subscribe and support me and help the channel grow. A like, a share, a comment, a question, all help with the YouTube ratings. Thank you. I know I said it before, but it's worth saying again. Once the ammonia and nitrite readings start to fall, increase feedings by a small amount. But keep the feeding constant and then wait for the readings to drop again before increasing the feeding again. Patience is the name of the game. Test the water regularly so you can monitor the water and note down the water parameters so you have a reference to refer to later. I use HANA pocket checkers. I will do a separate video on these at some point. When you introduce koi, don't introduce the water they're in. First of all, it will be full of crap water. You don't want that in your pond. 
Second, if there is any bacteria or parasites in the water, why take the risk of adding them? Float the koi in the bag for 20 minutes or however long it takes for the water temperatures to stabilize. A laser temperature gun is ideal as you can measure the water temperature in the bag through the plastic bag without opening it. Add some pond water to a bowl just deep enough for the koi to swim in without jumping. Open the bag, use a porous sock or your hands to place the koi in the bowl. A spare pair of hands to hold the bag open is ideal. If you're right-handed, place your hand around the head just in front of the gills and the left hand to support the weight of the body with the koi facing you. If you're in any doubt how to handle a koi, use a koi sock. Make sure you place the bowl next to the pond, let the koi swim in the bowl for a few minutes and then place it in the pond. Yes, if a koi has parasites on its body, it will go into the pond with them. You always want to quarantine your koi anyway. Autumn leaves are a problem as they break down and release ammonia back into the pond. So if there is a pile of autumn leaves in your pond, clean them out. Thank you.